Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the Dragonflight expansion rapidly approaching, you may be feeling like you're running out of time to lock in your main character to play as we head into a brand new adventure and an expansion that looks like it's going to be a blast. There's a lot to look forward to, but what class do you want to experience it as? Do you go with your trusty DPS who has never let you down? Do you want to try something new and maybe pick up a healer? Or do you want to skip all of those pesky cues and roll as a tank this time around? It's amazing decision and something a lot of folks get stuck on but fear not we've got some handy dandy tips for you that might make your decision a little bit easier or at least a bit more straightforward so in this video we're going to ask and answer one very loaded question how do you pick a main character for a new expansion now before we jump in be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video First things first, the most important question you have to ask yourself, and at least try to answer first, is what role do you want to play? Because if you want to tank, then a mage isn't really going to be a great fit, and if you want to try your hand at healing, well, a rogue doesn't seem like a good idea either. Are you okay with your class only having one available role, or do you want some options to switch things up, because that's going to limit your choices even more. The roles that a class has access to will dictate how your character can interact with the world, and most importantly how you play during any type of content. Whether you're going to solo through story quests, working on some world quests or reputation grinds, or if you want to hop into dungeons and how you want to run dungeons. There's a big difference between joining the random heroic queues and trying to push Mythic Plus as high as you can, and then of course the big end game activity of raiding. You can get a completely different experience out of the exact same raid just by playing different classes and roles, because your job and how you play play is just so different. But what if you don't know what role you're wanting to play this time around? Or what if you're new and don't even really know what each role entails? Well, let's go through each role in the game, what they're good at, what their purpose is, and how important each of them are. Maybe we can narrow this down to something you're interested in. One of the most important players in any type of group content is going to be the tank, or tanks depending on the content you're running. The tank is the bulwark, the wall, the sturdy guardian that keeps everyone else safe by taking all of the aggro, all of the damage, all of the enemy focus onto themselves. They're designed to stay alive, they can take big hits, they can increase their defensive power, and they can usually also self-heal themselves in one way or another. The whole idea of a tank is to keep the enemy focused on you, so the other roles can do their jobs. Without a tank, you won't stay alive for very long in any situation really, which makes them one of the most important roles in the game. If you die as a tank, everyone else is going to die pretty quickly after, so the pressure is on. The tanks are typically the ones who dictate the pace of an activity as well, especially dungeons. Tanks lead the way, they pull the mobs that you're going to be killing, and healers and DPS are pretty much expected to follow. But if you don't like to lead, or you're just not confident in your tanking, that can have a pretty negative effect on your playtime, which none of us want. Tanking also tends to be a bit of a thankless job, when it's arguably one of the harder roles to fill. The good news though is that playing a tank well can be incredibly satisfying. None of your group died, you didn't lose aggro, you managed your health and cooldowns well, and the content was cleared in record time. You just led your group to a fantastic victory, and that's a great feeling. The other role that's hard to fill and is right up there with the tanks as a key player in any group are the healers. I think healing is actually the hardest role to fill, for me personally anyway, and it's also the most stressful. The goal seems easy, but actually getting there is a whole lot of effort. Your job is to keep your team alive, keep everybody above zero, because as long as the tank is alive, they can take the damage, and as long as your DPS are alive, they can dish out the damage. That's the perfect recipe for killing whatever you try to kill. And then as long as you and your other healers are alive, well, you can try to keep everyone else alive, so the entire group is relying on you to do your job so they can do their job. That's why it's typically the most stressful role, but that's the bottom line of healing. You're the main thing that stands between your group's victory and defeat. I think good healers are really what carry content, because when something starts to go wrong, it's typically the healers that have to make some amazing plays to bring the group back from those mistakes. Now on the flip side, healers also tend to be the first target for toxicity. People tend to get a bit annoyed if they die, even if it's their fault. So expect to share a good chunk of the blame if anything goes wrong, even if it wasn't really down to you. 
Thankfully, healing can also feel very rewarding because it's very, very clear when you make a large difference in a group as a healer. Did you just save the tank's life with a quick cooldown and a huge burst heal? They probably noticed. Did the raid just almost die but your quick raid cooldown brought everyone back up to manageable levels? Well, at least you probably noticed. You can save the day as a healer and it feels incredible when you do. The tanks and healers are definitely the key to any successful group activity in World of Warcraft. Whether you're trying to take down the big bads of the current patch or expansion in the current raid, working your way through the Mythic Plus dungeon system, or even trying to climb the ranks in rated PvP, tanks and healers always have their place, though they do tend to have more responsibility and are often much harder to play well. That leaves us with the last role, the DPS. This role is deceptively simple, do damage. As much as you can, as quickly as you can, and at least somewhat try to stay alive. A dead DPS does no DPS. After all, most DPS only care about one thing, topping the charts, getting that top spot on the DPS meter, and doing anything they can to squeeze out just a few extra damage points. DPS can be split into melee and ranged DPS, and while they both have the same overall purpose and reason for being in a group, to deal as much damage as possible, they do play in significantly different ways. The melee are going to be right up against whatever they're attacking, hacking, slashing, disemboweling their targets. This is great for anyone who loves to be in the thick of things. The major downside though is that when it comes to raid bosses especially, you don't really have the best scenery. Most of the time you're stuck staring at the boss's butt. The trade-off here is that melee are typically a lot more mobile. Moving doesn't hurt your DPS quite as much. You can still use all of your abilities while moving or strafing or jumping, which means as long as you stay on the bosses, but you can keep DPSing no matter how much you have to move around. They do typically have to pay more attention to ground effects though. It's very easy to tunnel vision on the boss and not realize you've been standing in the fire for the past 30 seconds and your healers are getting really tired of keeping you alive. It also gets quite busy in in melee sometimes. You have the tanks, you have the other melee, any hunter's pets or warlock's pets, and all the spell effects going on that it can actually make it kind of hard to see sometimes. At least that's my excuse when I've been standing in the fire for the last 30 seconds. On the other side, ranged DPS can be much further away. They have a bigger picture of what's going on, and it's almost like a tactical DPS spot. You can see more, you typically have more to do when it comes to mechanics, and you kind of just have more time to react to things. It's a slower playstyle with a strong focus on pre-planning, pre-movement, and finding the perfect spot to stand still to fire off those long cast times. Most ranged DPS cannot DPS and move at the same time, so it's really important where you decide to stop to start those casts. If you have to cancel your casts to keep moving time and time again, well, you're just not doing any DPS, which means you're kind of not doing your job. The trick is learning how to stutter step your casts to maximize damage while moving for mechanics, and knowing which parts of your rotation allow for additional movement. Learning and understanding a fight and its mechanics are also very important, so you can be proactive instead of reactive, which will increase your potential DPS drastically. So I do believe you really have to learn a fight as a ranged DPS to get the most out of them. Now there is one DPS that kind of gets the best of both worlds, the Hunters. They get the mobility and DPS uptime of a melee with every other benefit that comes from being a ranged DPS. They can stand at range, so they get the bigger field of view, but they can freely move while maintaining almost 100% of their DPS. It really is the best of both worlds, which is also why Hunters are typically given every annoying or difficult mechanic in a raid setting, because they have the tools to deal with the mechanics while keeping up with the DPS. So if you want to lead the charge, dictate the pace of a group and take the aggro on anything and everything in sight, it sounds like you should be playing a tank. If you want to be in the lifeline for every group and carry your group to victory with some sweet plays and can handle the stress of an ever-changing playstyle, it sounds like you should be playing a healer. And then if all you care about are big numbers, well, you definitely should be playing a DPS. If you want to stare at a boss's butt all day, go melee, and if you want to take the easy road, definitely go for a ranged DPS. With all of that laid out, hopefully it makes it a bit easier to narrow down your choices and lock in the role you're hoping to fill. But even with that huge hurdle out of the way, there are so many tanks, so many healers and even more DPS. How do you even begin to choose which actual class to go forward with? 
Well, the first thing I would strongly consider is the theme of each class. Take the tanks, for example. How do you feel about tanks using shields? And I'm not talking about absorb shields, I mean literal shields. Because while the paladins and warriors use a hunking plate of metal to defend themselves, death knights, monks, demon hunters and druids do not. Death knights go all in with a two-handed weapon using death and blood magic to steal the health from their foes. Monks are mostly just using their fists, bobbing and weaving and staggering their damage over time to make them incredibly smooth to heal most of the time. Demon hunters are hardening their skin and using bone spikes to defend themselves, and they use fell magic to heal themselves and fend off attacks. And then druids, well, druids have their claws and teeth, I guess. They do get some cool bear forms to play around with though, so that's really cool. So what would you prefer? What do you like the look of? And which kind of setup do you think you could make the most amazing transmog for? That's the kind of thing you should consider when deciding on a class, because if you don't like how the class actually looks and the themes surrounding it, then chances are you probably won't stick with it for very long. You can say the same thing for the healers. Sure, they all do more or less the same job, right? They keep everyone healthy. They keep everyone alive so everyone else can do their job. You can't exactly tank a boss or dish out some DPS if you're dead on the floor now, can you? Well, a holy priest or a holy paladin channels the power of the light to heal their allies, whereas a druid or shaman tap into the power of nature, and then the monks are dancing around with some awesome kickflips and green swirly mist. But holy paladins are usually in melee, dishing out some extra damage whenever they can, and holy priests are in the back spamming out massive AoE heals. So even though their theme overlaps, their playstyle is very different. The same goes for druids and shamans. One is pure nature focused, lots of heal over time effects, good AoE healing, while the other is about being in tune with the elemental plane and tapping into that power source using totems and water healing and all sorts of goodness. And then the monks are completely different yet again, focusing on weaving in martial arts into their healing. They all look and play completely different, so try to find a theme that works for you. And then we come to the DPS, where I think theme matters the most, arguably. There's a lot of overlap between the classes in terms of how they play. Some classes are based around a build or spend a playstyle. Warriors, rogues, death knights, monks, rat paladins. They use certain abilities to build up a resource and other abilities to spend that resource. It's all about the cyclic rotation of priorities and ensuring you don't waste a drop of your precious resources. But each class has a very distinct theme, and despite certain abilities kind of doing the same thing, at the very least they're going to look different while doing it. So theme really shines through, and it's what separates the DPS the most in my opinion. Do you want to be a stealthy, stabby, sneaky melee DPS, or a foreboding, plate-wearing, clanking all over the place warrior with a very shiny weapon collection? The choice is ultimately up to you. The same goes for ranged DPS. We have a lot of casters in the game at this point who all seem to do the same thing, right? Stand still, somewhere in the back, and fling spell after spell while trying, and sometimes failing, to not stand in the puddles of fire. But mages and warlocks are completely different thematically. One of them is all about demons, darkness, and the shadowy sides of magic, while the other is more primal, tapping into the true elemental powers of frost, fire, and arcane magic. I think if you find a theme that you really like, especially when you consider what kinds of armor sets and transmog each class has access to and how you can make your character look, I think that's a great way to find a class that you're going to stick with. Honestly, I think one of the more exciting parts about Dragonflight and choosing a main this time around is that you can pick and choose how to express your theme and which sub-themes of a class you might want to pursue based upon their class trees. There are so many options spread out across the various talent trees and it's a lot of fun tinkering around with different options for different situations. The new talent trees have made playing around with multiple characters a lot more fun as well and I also think this system will be a cornerstone of WoW going forward. There's so much potential for expanding these talent trees and I'm excited to see what the dev team does with it in future patches and expansions. But then we also have something rather special in Dragonflight, a brand new class, the Evokers. This doesn't come around all too often these days. The last new class was back in Legion, so it's always a lot of fun to pick the new class. No one really knows the perfect way to play yet, theory crafting is all over the place, and at the end of the day it's something you haven't played before. That's always refreshing, especially when the new class has a new feature or a different way to play. Evokers have abilities they can charge up for different effects, which is really fun to play around with, and they have deep breath 
combat abilities where they soar across the battlefield, breathing fire as they go. Looks like they're going to be incredibly mobile. I'm really excited to see how they do in the expansion, so if you want to play the new kid on the block, Evokers could be a great pickup as well. Bear in mind that being new also comes with a few drawbacks, like more bugs, broken abilities or interactions, or just very wonky tuning. Now, if you're just looking for the easiest class to play in each role, I can help you out with that too. For the tanks, I would have to go with the druids. They're big, they're beefy, they have great defensive cooldowns and abilities, they are very easy to play, and they should do pretty well for themselves in this expansion. It just ticks all of the boxes for an easy to play tank that is also good at what it does, without having to put too much effort in. Now, druid tanks have been called a bit of a boring tank, partially because you're spamming the same abilities most of the time, but if that's okay with you, and all you want to do is be able to skip those cues and be a sturdy tank almost no matter what, druids are going to be a great pick. They also give you the most options out of any other class, which is always nice if you want to take a break from tanking, or you want to swap your role without having to swap your class. As for the healers, the easiest healer to pick up and play and do well with is still going to be the Holy Priest. They just have so many tools at their disposal, honestly maybe too many tools at this point, you're going to need quite a few extra keybinds for a Holy Priest, but the point still stands. They are very easy to pick up and play, their entire toolkit is quite straightforward, but they kick out an insane amount of healing, and they have an answer for almost any situation you might find yourself in. There are also a lot of very fun and powerful talents you can swap around for various situations which will make you an amazing group mate for any type of content. Holy Priests are also shaping up to be really good, so not only are they very accessible, but they also have an amazing amount of potential. And then my easiest DPS class pick is always the same really, you just can't beat a hunter when you're talking about ease of play and potential. Hunters have great mobility, they have good utility, they bring some interesting options to any group they play in, but they're also very sturdy. They can maintain almost 100% DPS efficiency and uptime while moving, something very few ranged can accomplish, and because they're a ranged DPS, you're going to have an easier time with almost any type of content. You have pets to either take aggro and keep yourself safe, or deal damage without you even needing to really do anything yourself. They're probably the most beginner friendly class, but they're also just really good, which is a fantastic combination for anyone looking for an easy to play DPS class. Now, as a general rule, I do think that ranged DPS are easier to play when compared to melee. Ranged can keep their distance, they typically have good mobility, and they have a better field of view in most encounter spaces. Melee are always right up against the boss's butt, and if that butt just and so happens to be kind of big, or right next to a wall, your camera angles can get really messy, and it's just harder to see everything that's going on. Ranged DPS get the full picture, so I usually find it's easier to see and react to mechanics as a ranged DPS. Yes, your mileage may vary on that one though. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, when you're picking a main character, especially for a new expansion, I suggest you choose something that really resonates with you. If you hate the idea of the holy light, I don't think you'll stick with a paladin or a priest for very long. If you don't like demons or fell magic or bad guys, warlocks or death knights probably don't fit too well either. Playing something you can gel with thematically gives you the best chance of longevity in my opinion. So that's my best suggestion if you want to play a class for as long as possible, maybe even throughout the entire expansion. With that being said, you can play the strongest class, that's always an option. You can play the flavor of the month, no one is going to stop you, but what I will say is, flavor of the month is usually exactly that, it's just for that month. Maybe for WoW it's more accurate to say flavor of the patch, or flavor of the raid, or the season, but what I'm trying to say is, the best class will always be changing, sometimes multiple times within the same patch as updates are made, and as you gear up. Some classes do better at the start with less gear, and other classes do better when everyone's geared up. That's just how it goes with scaling. If you want to play the best class, you're signing yourself up for swapping classes every time a patch rolls around, which is also fine if that's what you want to do, you do you. Just be aware you'll probably be leveling a lot of ults, and you'll have to gear them all up and restarting over and over again can be quite a pain in the rear. Thankfully, on that note, Dragonflight does seem to be quite alt-friendly this time around. We have a lot of account-wide unlocks in the Renown system, the Dragon Riding talent tree, leveling is faster on alts. It's actually shaping up to be a great expansion for players who love alts, which will also be good if you want to re-roll every time a new raid comes out. 
Now I will say that the dev team has been quite active, even very recently with tuning changes. Some of them have been very heavy handed as well. So if you are chasing the flavor of the month, the single strongest class to play for season one, you're actually not going to get an accurate answer on that until after the raid comes out. Even during the first few weeks of the raid, tuning changes always happen, so you kind of have to ride that out to see who comes out on top later on, and then get ready to swap and grind, because chances are the class you picked won't be number one. That's sadly the reality of chasing the flavor of the month, which is why I don't do it anymore. Now as for myself, I have a few classes picked out. I'll be taking the Hunter into Dragonflight as my main, but due to how ult friendly Dragonflight is shaping up to be, I'll also be leveling an Evoker very early on, alongside my Druid, and then I'll also be leveling my Warrior. The main thing I'm excited for is working on different professions on each character, so I think this expansion is going to be a blast. But what about you? What are you going to focus on when deciding on a main character for Dragonflight? Is there a class that you've already settled on or you're still struggling to find that one class that really speaks to you? How do you feel about the potential of alts this time around? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I'll see you next time.